like this APC and today I make another tutorial. This one is going to be an another addition to my retro game series where I go over um, how to ma make classic games in Game Maker. So today, this is going to be the third one. I start out with Helicopter, then Snake, and now we're going to do Pong, which was considered by most to be um, the first game ever made, but you'll find out in a second that it was not. In the beginning of these retro games things, I I like to start with history and fun facts, but it turns out that many of you guys don't like that. But as you can see, my the graph attention on my uh, snake video. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to allow you to click the screen right now to skip past the history for you history haters. And if you like history like I do, or these video game history, then um, I'll show you that right now. So Pong. Pong was created by a guy named Alan Alcorn in 1972. Alan Alcorn was an employee for Atari, and Atari was found, also founded earlier in 1972 by Nolan Boschnell and Ted Dabney. So one of the first things they did once they um, started the company is Nolan Boschnell hired Alan Alcorn. Apparently they knew each other from um, working at Apex together. And he hired Alan Alcorn because Alan Alcorn's experience in electrical engineering and computer science. However, he had no experience whatsoever in video game type things. So. Nolan Bushnell decided to give, give him a practice training type exercise and at the same time he also wanted to try and compete with the um, Magnavox Odyssey's Pong type game which he felt was, wasn't was a very good game, he felt like that they could do better. So he told Alan Alcorn to create a simple game with a dot that moved around and two paddles and points. And then he added on this for an important contract with G for GE, which was a complete lie. But he did it so that Alan Alcorn would work hard, and work hard he did. He um he d did a lot of things to make the game more interesting. Like for instance, he made the ball speed up wh whenever um it, w it would bounce, and he also made it angle off differently depending on where it hit the paddle. He also overcame a hardware issue, which allowed it to use sound. So after three months they decided to um, test it out, they had a, a, a prototype ready. So they installed it in a local pub called Andy Caps Tavern. Alright, so at Andy Caps Tavern did very, very well. It was earning $35 to $40 a day, which completely amazed Nolan Boschnell. And people were coming to the pub just to play the game. So obviously the next step is to expand, so um, Boschnell went around trying to Get, get a loan from a bank in order to start production of but most banks wouldn't wouldn't let him get a loan because back then um well the banks were thinking okay this is just another variation of pinball and back then pinball was associated with mafia for whatever reason but eventually wells fargo was willing to give them some some money to start building products so they started building and first they were killing build 10 a day and they turned out glitchy but eventually they they got the glitches figured out and they, they started going at a nice smooth process. So a year later, 1974, they were um, shipping internationally, so it's all going very well for them. But at this point, they, they hit a hiccup. They get sued by Magnavox, which was because they based Pong off one of their games and didn't give them rights to the game or something like that. So they eventually, um, Atari and Magnavox, it, they it eventually settled at Magnavox would have the rights to all the games produced by Atari for the next year. So the way Atari went about um, solving this is they didn't make any games whatsoever in the next year. So like Magnavox didn't win that one. So then later on, Atari's now expanded to a, a pretty good company. They're making a lot of money. So they make a home version of Atari, which so they re released it in 1975. This one could be played at, at home, and it, they made 40 million dollars off it in a year. So that, that's that's pretty amazing. So. From there on, Pong would have happily ever after become the icon that it is today. One thing I want to make sure you understand is that, if you don't understand already, that Pong is not the first video game ever made. It is pretty generally accepted nowadays that Pong was the first video game ever made, but it's not. There were games that came before it, like uh, um, Nolan Boschnell and Ted Dabney, people who found Atari, they actually made, they actually made a game called Computer Space before they found Atari. And there were other games before that, but it becomes a little bit unclear at one point because it's sort of you drawing a line between a board game and an electronic board game, and it, it gets unclear. But anyway, the point is, Atari's not the first game. But what Atari did do is, it was the first commercially successful game. 
which opened the door to the video game industry because of Pong. From there, that's where it started, and now it's grown into the $21 billion industry that it is today. So that's all for the history. The people don't like history are back now, and let's get started. So for this, we're going to need two sprites, the ball and the paddles. All right, so for the ball, I'm going to make an 8x8 square, so SPR ball, edit sprite. Let's add some image. Resize the canvas. Eight by eight. And we're gonna fill it in white. That's all there is to it. And now for the paddles, SPR player, what we're gonna call it. Edit sprite. Resize canvas. We're gonna make it eight wide. Also, don't forget the center on the ball. And we're going to um, make the Y set 16 on here. All right. So now in order to make authentic, we're going to add the background, which is simply a line going across the middle. But we're just going to make back line, I guess. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because we'll figure out how to repeat it later when we add it to the room. So. Alright, so it's our repeating background. Now let's get into programming. Okay, we're going to start with the paddles. Call the first OBJ player 1. And we go straight into the event. Okay, so if we press up, we want to go up. So if keyboard check BK up, then, and we also want to check if it's about to go above, um, above the top of the room. So what we're going to check that is going to say if Y is more than 0 plus 16. Okay, it's plus 16 part. I know I could just put 16, but this way it won't confuse anyone. Um, 0 is the Y value at the top of the room, and 16 is exactly half of the height of our sprite. So this way it'll check to make sure that uh, it doesn't go above the room um, image-wise, because the center, the reference point for our sprite is in the center, so if we just did that, it would make sure that the center of our sprite doesn't go above it, which means that half of it would still be able to go above it. So that's why plus 16 is there. Alright, and if that happens, we want y minus equal 8, so it, it'll move up 8 pixels. Alright, so then we're going to copy that. And if we press down, we want to go through a similar process. That will be room height now, because that's the y value at the bottom of the room. And we're going to subtract it by 16 this time for similar reasons as on top, and add Y. Hello, SinForgeBot272 here to say that the greater than sign in the second line needs to become a less than sign. Alright. So now we're going to... Oh, ooh. forgot some sprite. Sorry. So now we're going to duplicate this object. Call the next one OEJ Player 2. And I want to make one modification for this, is that we're not going to use up down keys, otherwise it'll be very annoying. So I'm going to use num set numpad. I'm sure many of you would, for WASD, but my keyboard didn't set up correctly, so I'm not. I'm just going to leave it as it. So that's, that's like that. We can two VK numpad five. Oh, I'm sorry. This one needs to be five. This one needs to be two. That, that's just for my life. All right. So now we got the um, player two controlled and player one controlled. All right. And now let's program a control object. This is going to control the score. Let's, let's just call it score. Score control. Alright, so in the creation event, we're going to create two variables. Global dot player one score equals zero. So this is going to be the score of our first, of player one. And then down here we're going to put the score of player two. And they will start at zero. Hello, SinForgeBot272 here to say to change these variables to global.p1 score and global.p2 score because that's what he uses the rest of the time. And then for the draw event, we are going to, um, here we're going to draw it at the right places so you can see them. So first going to say draw text. So the, the Function script are x, y, and what we want to write. So if x is going to be 
140, which is 20 pixels to the left of the center. Y is going to be 50, I guess. And what we want to draw is the value of global.p1 score. All right, so we're going to copy this. And I'm going to make this one 160 middle plus 20 is 180. And it's going to be P2 score. Now it seems like we're done right now, but there's um, one thing that we're missing. I learned this when I was preparing the tutorial is that the default color for text is black, and we're going to make the background background black. So if we keep it like this, we won't be able to see it. So we got to change the color of the font. So draw set color. And that's how you do that. Make sure this turns up red, otherwise it won't register because they have the constants for the colors. All right. So now that's done, let's create a final object, OBJ ball. And this is really responsible for all thinking in this game. So in the creation event, we want to go in one of two directions, left or right. So we're going to say direction equals choose 0, which would be right, or 180, which would be left. And then we want to set speed, so we're going to say speed equals 4. All right. Now let's go in our sub event. Right here we're going to check what we want to happen if it goes outside the room. So if um, y is less than 0, meaning it's gone above the room, or if y is more than room height, if this happens we want it to switch the direction vertically. So that would be the same as saying v speed equals negative v speed. Okay, and then, so then if x is less than zero, meaning it has it has um, gone too far to the left outside the screen, this means I want a point to be added to our player one's no player two score. Sorry, so global dot p two score plus equals one, and then we want to restart. So we'll go for the same code we went through in the creation event. So we want to copy this whole, whole entire thing and, and remake it for the right side. So in this case, I'll be when x is more than room width. And I got a horrible feeling I'm forgetting something here, but we'll find out in a second. Score. Hello, SinforgeBot272 here to say that yes, he did forget something. In both the outside room right and the outside room left if statements you need to add. X equals is start and Y equals is start. All right, now I gotta handle what happened when it collides with um, one of the paths. So we'll go start with OBJ player one. We're gonna change the direction depending on the orientation path. So I'm gonna write down the code then I'll actually I'll explain as I go. So we're gonna set the direction, set it equal to, so new direction isn't gonna depend anyway on the old direction. And we're going to say other dot Y minus Y. So this will be the difference between the Y values of this, this object and uh, the paddle. Divide it by 16. Keep in mind the the um, height is 32, half is 16. So theoretically, this will end up this value right here will end up between negative one and one, which is the the way we want it. Except theoretically, if it hits it on the bottom edge or top edge, it could be a little more than that. But oh well, pretty much can be between negative one and one. And then we're going to multiply that by times 50. So then the angle will could be anywhere between 50 and negative 50. Theoretically, like I said earlier, at the top edge or the bottom edge, it'll be angle will be done a little bit more. But oh well, this is too early. Hello, Sinforge bot 272 here to say that you need to add a speed increase here. All right, so we're going to copy this, and we're going to actually I didn't need to copy it. Sorry, we're going to duplicate the event and to collision with OVG player two. So. I didn't say it yet, but OBJ player one is coming on the left and player two is on the right. If you haven't noticed, so we got to change this code around a little bit to make it adapt for it to be on right. So we're gonna add 180. So we add 180, and we also need to flip the direction. So we're gonna flip these two. I don't think that I can do a good enough job to explain why this happens, or why this is important. But try playing the game um, with it not flipped, and you'll quick see quickly enough why. All right, so now. Guys, set the sprite. Don't forget that. Okay. Now let's go into our room. First of all, we're making quite a bit smaller. 
gonna make it 320 wide by, by uh, 240. We're going to add in our ball object roughly in the middle. Um, I'm not sure if that's perfectly in the middle, but it's, it's close enough. So I want to go and go, going to go on the left. Then I gotta mod modify the X a little bit. Player two, which is going to be right there. And I gotta add the score control somewhere. Doesn't matter because it's not a sprite. Okay, now it's that's not the background. I'm gonna change background color to black. And then we're going to add our tile background. Now, now it looks horrible if we don't tile horizontally. There, it looks a little better, except we want it to be in the center. So we're gonna change the X to 160. And now it's perfect. Alright, before we start, I'm going to go to global game settings. I'm going to scale it by 200%. So that way it'll be grow. It'll grow. Alright, so it's, it's going back and forth fine. And since it's hitting the center every time, it bounces back um, perfectly and it's seeing the ball going faster every time. We have the arrow key, which works fine. If it goes out, points are added, which is what we want. It's spawning randomly in a different direction each time. And if you hit an angle, like hit an angle goes off at an angle, numpad works fine, that's pretty much everything, the score is working fine, alright. So that's all for this tutorial, I hope you got something out of it, I uh, hope it's useful entertaining to you, and so now I'm going to take off the list, and I don't have challenges for the retro games like it's done, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.